She tries second. This is the most expensive Audi production car ever made. And I'd bet a few quid that many of you have never even heard of it. Hell, I'd never even heard of it until my friend Anthony from Sports and Touring went ahead and bought one, this one. Now, why would you care? Because to the untrained eye, I mean, myself included, until you look really closely, it's just a first generation R8 V10 Spider. But it's not, it's a very special R8 V10 Spider labeled the GT. Only 333 of these were ever produced. I think it was 333 Spiders and 333 Coupes. And more interestingly, only 33 of those came to the UK, the Spider variant that is. And now apparently Anthony tells me there's only 24 that are registered on the road. So in other words, it's extremely, extremely rare. When new, this cost 158 grand or thereabouts plus options. You may be thinking that's not the most expensive Audi because you can go onto Audi's website right now and the most expensive I think is the V10 Carbon Edition Spider, something like that. It's 165k before options. What you've got to remember is that this was produced in 2012 and 158 grand in 2012 adjusted for inflation today is just a little over 193k, almost 195 grand. And you've got to bear in mind that is before options. So this does mean this is still indeed the most expensive Audi ever made. So why, I hear you ask, do I have this car on my channel? It's not the normal type of thing. Well, <laughs> as well as it being my friend's car, I think it's a very interesting car and something I like to call a depreciation daddy. Now, the reason for that is because, although I'm going on about how this was the most expensive Audi ever made, today, these can be picked up for around a third, give or take, of their original value based on that inflation figure. So that means that give or take over the nine years that this thing has been on the road, it's lost around 130 grand in value. That's about 15K a year over the last nine years. Although mind, most of that depreciation was in the first six or seven years. In other words though, 15K a year is almost the average person's salary in this country. It's a lot of money. So that does mean we can stand all day long and point fingers and laugh at the person who bought this thing new. But contrarily, it does mean that Anthony's potentially bought himself a pretty good investment. But actually, more importantly than all of that, I've got the keys in my hand, and this is a 5.2 litre V10 supercar. Radio. All right, Joel. I can't quite believe this. This is your first time in the V10? This is, yeah, my first time seeing it, and then, yeah, first time being in it. Nice. This is Anthony, by the way, from Sports and Touring. Also with us today is Damani, also on the channel, and your son. Yeah. Which is really not a really nice combo that you have on the channel there. Yeah. Oh, and you guys are making a video today. We are. Um, also on the 7 Series, but on a sort of behind the scenes um, look at my filming with this car. So go ahead and check their channel out um, if, you, if you haven't already and subscribe. Not a cold start. But no, but that's a good thing. you can feel it straight away, can't you? You can feel that we've got a big V10 behind us. So this is the Artronic gearbox. I've never used one of these. Presumably, it's fairly self-explanatory. And we have the paddles here as well. Yeah. Very good. So, just the main thing is, pull the lever, and then kind of, you'll feel it happening. So there's a skill to it. Yeah. That's what I like about it, because you're used to driving a manual. There's a skill to driving a manual, but anyone can drive Oof. in the city. Yes, exactly. So let's take a right here. There's a slight underpass here, actually. So this is already going to be a nice little, way of hearing it and of course roof down because we're in the spider <laughs> wow 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 so i guess it'd be rude not to go straight to the hindhead tunnel i think it's it's obligatory absolutely click lift yeah it's like click lifts click, click lift lifts. that yeah and then well, when you're going fast it's more like Bang bang. <laughs> yeah. You only have to come up like. Okay, like, not all the way off. Not all the way off. No, no. Oh. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful. 
beautiful <laughs> sound that is. Wow. Oh my god, the roads. <laughs> that thing has some grunt and that was probably half power. So I was going to say initially, when this car came out back in 2012, was it? It got a little bit of stick from auto journos because obviously the GT, the idea of the GT was to lose weight primarily. And it lost around 85 kilo, I think, over its V10 standard counterpart. Whereas obviously making it into a Spider adds 100 kilos. Yeah. So there was a little bit of like, well, you know, it's a bit of a marketing exercise, a bit of a pointless car. However, let me tell you, when you're in it with the roof down and you put your foot down, It makes sense. <laughs> How come you ended up going for an R8 GT Spider? Well, funny story. My 370Z, which has also appeared on Joel's channel before, yes. which he had a lot of fun with. Unfortunately, he couldn't drive it that day because it kind of happened a bit. Last minute, wasn't it? Yeah. Awesome car, that. And um, that's going in for a little bit of work. Some more fun tuning bits. You can watch my channel to find out more about that. Um, so I thought I'd better get a daily. <laughs> and couldn't find any car that I was actually interested in. Yeah. So we just did the usual thing where your budget just starts going up and you just ignore, you're not going to really buy anything. You're just looking at cars for fun. Then, but then we saw this. I had to have it. When is another one going to come on the market with this spec? Yeah. And again, 24 of them on the road in the UK at the moment. Yeah. Six of them are sawned and three of them somewhere else, but super rare and they just don't come up often, if ever. Um, but back to your point about why bother getting a GT Spider, I think we're going to find out right now. I was just about to say, I think this is going to speak louder than any words that I can talk about or even Anthony. Here we go. Let's just try third gear. There's no How words. Do you understand? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, I, I don't really have much to ben ben benchmark it uh, against. I mean, sound wise, I have a V12 straight pipe 7 series, but to be honest, that's got nothing on this. And I drove an R8 manual quite recently. And um, that was a V8, right? V8 manual, lovely, amazing gearbox. It's completely different to this, though. This is just got so much I mean this feels like a supercar I mean that's it, it's it's rough the bucket seats hold you in the way it accelerates I mean it's clearly a lot more powerful so whilst Anthony's just popped into the shop there I'll leave the cameras rolling and just divulge a few thoughts I mean the sound for me is the first thing that's just sets this car out i mean that v10 right behind you 5.2 liters over 550 brake horsepower it sounds incredible you're then greeted by this flat bottom steering wheel r8 gt badging here the big white dials in front of you with a speedo that goes up to 220 miles per hour and then you're just surrounded by carbon and alcantara and then hugged by these bucket seats it's it's a complete occasion and the gearbox as well it kicks you in the back of the spine like nothing I've experienced before. In fact, it's actually quite similar to the E63 M6 in the way that that kicks you really hard. But I love it. It's not a good gearbox in the sense that it's not gonna slam through the deers like a D DCT or even a ZF gearbox. However, it has a character about it and a sense of occasion, which 
is lost amongst most new cars now and I personally love it. Got the gear shifts. Right? That was flat, yeah. Good. The gear shifts. They're just I don't know why anyone would hate this gearbox. <laughs> it's great. It suits the character of this car especially. These days, everything you jump into, ZF8 speed or you know, something like that, and you can just plant it and nah, nah. there's no like feel to the gear shifts, maybe a couple of DSG farts if you've got like a golf R, but that's all fake and this you can, you know. I don't know, it just, it's part, it's just a big mechanism that you feel. Yeah. And you've still got something to do to get the best out of it. you still yes. got to get that timing of the shift. Oh. There goes a GoPro. Yep. It just gets happier and happier the more you push it. And it is properly quick as well. But you know what, it's not that, I don't find it that intimidating to drive. I think, I think it's because it just feels so um, confident on the road, doesn't it? And because you, you have got so much control over what's happening, it's not at all doesn't feel like the car's getting away from you at any point. And I can't even imagine the tyres or brakes are even warm and it's very compliant. Let's just give it a little bit, look, 5,000 RPM. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well guys, I have uh, pulled back here now. So really all there is to say is a massive thank you to you. I do apologise actually that this video um, it's probably been a lot of a lot of waffle and ugly faces on my part. Uh, however, as mentioned, um, over on Sports and Touring channel, there's uh, a plethora of videos with this car and there will be to come actually. So go over and, and subscribe to that if you want to know some actual information that's useful, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, uh, thank you so much for nice. giving me the keys to your pride and joy. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. And I've had an absolute blast. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. And um, see you very, very soon.